Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. All right, so now we're at mid-January already, 2022. So that means that if you've had your My Daily Organizer or MDO uh, in 2021, that you've filled it out and now you're moving on, hopefully, to the MDO 2022. But I wanted to share the uh, good practices that you can maybe employ and what to do at the end of the year, for example, with the MDO 2021. It's pretty much the same thing. I'm just going to cover it on the three main platforms, the Remarkable Books and the Supernote. The first thing that you need to do is basically export your filled out MDO as a PDF to get it outside of your platform and to store it somewhere safe preferably on multiple locations. So on the Remarkable itself, the simplest way to do that is to use the Remarkable desktop app. The mobile app can do it too, but uh, it's not the best. And that basically uh, is as simple as it gets. You simply navigate to the location where MDO is stored on your uh, device. And if everything is synced up, you will see it here you right click on the document itself and then you just go export as PDF. If you're extremely adventurous, you may want to export as a PNG, but just keep in mind that PNG or SVG, they will export one file per page. And considering that the MDO is over 1700 pages long, that means that you will end up with 1700 files, which is most likely not what you're looking for. So yeah, you can export as a PDF. And once you've done that, that's a process that, uh, yeah, well, let's just save it here. So, oh, you need to name it. So MDO 2021 archive, for example, then you go save and you will have this progress bar on the bottom which is basically an indication of the exporting process. So you just wait for a little while. And once it's done, you will get a check mark notification that it has been exported. And if you open it up on your computer, for example, you will see that the hyperlinks are preserved. So everything here is going to work as normal. And then you can just navigate through it and see what's what. One of the things to kind of keep in mind is that um, Remarkable exports as a rasterized uh, file. What does that mean? Well, that means that the notes are burned into the pages. They are not retained as vectors. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind. And once you have exported this file, now that's your main backup or main archive. And since it's a PDF, you can do whatever you normally would. But first, let's explore the other platforms as well. What are the most common processes, how to get your files off the platform and what to do with the files afterwards. On a books platform, um, the process is a little bit different and you have uh, many different ways of actually doing these things. But uh, the main way is to basically tap in the middle to expose the additional options. It's convoluted and that's my main thing with the books platform there. They add features, they improve features, but they just keep making it more difficult and more unintuitive to use to a degree where it's kind of like silly. But anyway, yeah. So to, to export a PDF document on books, you uh, first have to tap in the middle to expose the menu. Then unintuitively, you have to tap on the scribble uh, toolbar. Now I keep a small scribble toolbar. I'll explain later why, but let's, uh, let's just customize the floating toolbar and get it back to maybe a hundred, two more. There we go. So once that's better, so that you can actually see it. All right. Um, so once you have it here, there's the icon, this one with the arrow outside, which is the export icon. Why an exporting of the entire document has been located in a scribble tool toolbar and nowhere else. For the life of me, I have no idea why it's there, but it is. Also on uh, above it, you have an option to save, which is also an important one, which we'll talk a little bit, a little bit later, a little bit, a little bit. You tap on export and then you have embed PDF or save as a new PDF. You want to save as a new PDF. 
Once you go to save as a new PDF, you have the option to choose what kind of color on the ink you will want to use. When it's exported, it can be the original color or all of it can be converted to red, blue or green. And also it gives you the location where the uh, file will be exported. So once you actually say OK, now it's going to do the exporting process and it will allow you the option to actually jump over to the location of where the exported file is. So that's how you export or archive your filled out MDO 2021, for example, and get it ready. But it's still on your device. So first you got to export. Now the second step is to get it off your device and to get it somewhere else, right? And on the books platform, there are multitude of ways of doing that. You can, uh, from this, you can maybe just long press and then you can share it with an email, upload it to Dropbox, uh, share it via Bluetooth, you can upload it to Google Drive or anything like that. I mean, this is a normal Android basic platform. So a long press and a share allows you to share this file outside of this platform anywhere you want. But I want to also show one uh, method that uh, is new since 3.2 and I did cover it before. For me, it's one of the more convenient ways of doing this. So basically, if you go to the apps, I've organized my apps into folders. So uh, what you're looking for is the app called Books Drop, right? So once I go into Books Drop, so now I can scan the QR code, go to the link that is given. Now I will have the uh, yeah, basically a, a LAN connection to my device, direct connection to my device, and then I can send to books or save to phone. So in this case, if I want to save to phone, I can now choose where what is. And the cool thing is that it shows you the recent files as the default one. Of course, you can browse where what to kind of find uh, where different files are, because you can go through images, library, music, downloads, etc. But the recent files is usually what you were using. And in this case, here is the exported file that I got. And then I can just sim simply uh, save it and go save to phone. And it's already downloaded and now it's off the device and on my phone. And then I can choose to move it from my phone wherever I want, you know, upload it onto a cloud or anything like that. My personal preferred way of doing this is um, basically using the AutoSync app, which is something I talked about in one of the Big Books Guide videos. And I prefer this method simply because um, it synchronizes with my uh, Google Drive and then I can just simply navigate where I want to and here are all of my files, which is a great thing to have. Now, the thing about uh, exporting from books is that it does things a little bit differently and uh, it does have an option of so you'll see that I have two files here I have books Monday cover one and that is just me hitting the save function that I talked about and then just simply opening that file the same file not exported the same MDO file that I just saved and if I open it up you will see that it does contain the notes, right? So the notes are there. And one of the major differences uh, compared to other platforms is that uh, Books does not rasterize these things. And um, these are actually contained as vector files in case somebody is interested in that so that they know how it works. And the exported file is pretty much identical. Um, it's just a different version. So that's a way of also doing a version control if, if it's something that you're interested in. It also retains the functionality. So yeah, the, the navigation is most definitely there, uh, but it also exports the handwritten notes as vectors. This uh, might be important some, for some people, might not be important for some people, but I just wanted to kind of mention it to know what to expect when you export from different platforms. And finally, on the super note, the exporting process is thankfully very logical and simple. All you need to do is press on the three buttons to actually access the menu and tap the export button. Now, the Super Note actually has a couple of new other features that are really, really cool. And one thing that's a little bit problematic, at least for me, we while we do have the option of uh, exporting handwriting type to original or vector, when I export it either way, I never get it as vectors. So maybe that's a bug from a new OS or something like that. But all I get is the same rasterized uh, uh, export like on Remarkable. Basically, what you've written in is burned in. It's not objects like on books. It's just part of the page and you can't edit it. You can't do anything with it. So that is a thing. But I 
it it should work as a vector so i think that that might be an issue with an os or maybe i'm not i maybe i'm misreading something but the cool thing about it is MDO is a 1700 pages long document or more in the case of MDO 2022. It would be convenient that you have an option to just export the pages that were filled in, right? And the Supernote is actually the only one that allows you that via the option of annotation page. So if you export page numbers in this option, you select annotation page, what that's going to do is it's going to export a new PDF of the MDO, but it's going to export only the pages that have been written on. So that's a huge plus, but it carries with it a huge minus as well. Because it's going to disrupt the ordering of pages and everything, that means that all of the hyperlinking functions are going to be gone. So if you export with the annotation page or page ranges, the likelihood with the annotation page, all of the, the hyperlinks are going to be gone. But if you want to retain the hyperlinks functionality, then you export as all pages. So let's say if I want to export like this, I just go confirm, and it's going to say exporting. And depending on how many pages it has, that's how long the process is going to take. So once it's done, it also gives you an option to jump to and gives you there you go. So now we're there. So same as with books, we have exported our uh, MDO version, right, for archiving, but it's still on our device. So step two is to get it off our device. And like with books, we have multitude of options available on the Supernote. Most of them uh, involve you being either synchronized to one of the cloud accounts or using a physical USB connection, which you can, of course, use with the books as well. But if you don't want to muck about with that, then you first have to ensure that you go to the options and you choose what kind of synchronization service do you want to use. So you can use the Supernode Cloud or you can use a Dropbox. If you link with the Dropbox, you are going to be synchronizing with the Dropbox folder. That's fine. If it's Supernode with a Supernode Cloud. How do we synchronize? Once you've exported and made some changes, all you need to do is swipe down from up. And this middle icon here is the synchronization icon. So you tap on the cloud icon to synchronize with the cloud. And remember, this is going to synchronize with the service that you chose in the option that I showed. So Supernode Cloud or Dropbox. So once this is done, you will get a notification and that's pretty much it. So it has been synchronized. And once it's synchronized, then you can either go to your Dropbox and find the file there. But the important part is that the synchronization process moves the file away from the device onto another location, which is the whole point. If you're satisfied with the file being on your Dropbox and you just want to leave it there as an archive, that's fine. You don't need to do any other steps. But if you want to download it, then you would download it from Dropbox onto your computer as a normal Dropbox file. But if you are using Supernode Cloud, you have actually two options of accessing these. Option number one is to go in your web browser to uh, cloud.supernode.com and you log in with the same method that you log in here, mobile phone or the uh, email password system. That's the only thing they have to match. Um, and once you actually do that, then you have the access to basically all of the stuff. And here, this is where my exported documents are. Method number two is to use the Supernote partner app on a mobile device. And when you actually use that, you also log in with the same credentials. But as you can see here, you will have the access to it on your phone. And you have the same thing where you can uh, choose on the side where do you want to go. So if I want to go to my exports, there I, go, there I have my export files. Then I can just select this, it opens it up and I have a download icon. If I want to download it, tap on the download, you get the process, you're done. Boom, bam, bim, and that's it. And the document that is exported from the Supernote basically looks like this. So this is a full document. Uh, so you can see that the uh, hyperlinks are preserved. Everything functions as it should be. But like on the Remarkable, even though I exported two different versions, there's no difference. The written information is simply embedded and it doesn't act like objects. So that's one thing to kind of keep in mind, but everything else works normally. Those are the different ways how you can archive and export the MDO 
2021 in this case or 2022 from these different platforms. Once you have exported it and you have it on a cloud and you have it on a local location, that's a good place to be because you don't want to have your backup of an important data uh, on one location only because redundancy is key with the backup. If one thing fails, then you have another one somewhere else. So what I usually do is I have at least two local locations and at least one cloud locations, depending on the importance of the data, sometimes even more. So um, this is only for archival purposes. And basically, once you're done with that, you can actually even safely and you ensure that what you exported is correct. You can safely delete the, the MDO 2021 if you want from your device um, and yeah, kind of move on. Um, and since what you're exporting is a regular PDF file, you can do whatever you normally would want to do with that PDF file, including printing out pages. But I don't think anybody wants to print out 1700 pages, but you still can print out ranges of pages should you choose to do so. All right, so that's the end of the year practices, something that you kind of can do and it's a good idea to do now that the year is done and the new year is beginning. So uh, I wanted to also cover uh, what are good daily, weekly or monthly practices to ensure that you don't lose the important data that you actually input into your organizer. Why is this important? All of these devices, they are digital devices and they use and the storage on these di digital devices is prone to failure. That's a completely normal thing. No device is an exception from that. So that's something that's been true for since the technology and the storage, digital storage has existed. Now, the scary thing is that it can just become corrupt, unopenable or disappear even uh, in some cases out of the blue. And if you don't do these things that I'm kind of mentioning, then that is a pretty trauma traumatic experience. Anyone who has ever had a hard drive failure or a flash drive failure of any kind will know how horrible that feels. You typically make that mistake once to neglect the advice that I'm gonna uh, give you now and never again because once you do lose the important information, you ensure that you will never do that. So that's why I do quadruple uh, uh, backups because I have lost important data in the past. There are general practices to kind of keep in mind how to ensure that even if something bad does happen, it's a remote case, you know, it's not really a guarantee that it's going to happen, but you know, it's better safe than sorry. What can you do to prevent a catastrophe? Well, first of all, you can do uh, uh, make sure that your current version that's synchronized with the cloud service or whatever it is that you're using is current. How do you ensure doing that? Well, it's different on different platforms. On a Remarkable, uh, all you need to do is to make sure that you close the document down. So once I've added info, so now I've added something new. I'm not just going to close it. I'm not just going to shut it down. That's not good because you are not committing the changes to the remarkable cloud. Instead, at the end of every single day that I've used and added something to MDO, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to swipe down to make sure that it's closed. Once it's closed, I'm going to wait for it to actually synchronize because you can see the icon here. He is synchronizing with some other things, but eventually, there we go. It is now synchronizing. And I'm going to make sure, absolutely sure that this icon is done, basically is gone. So that the synchronization process is done. And then only then I'm going to shut down my remarkable, close it and put it somewhere else. So this is something that's very, very important to do because it ensures that even if a failure of flash storage occurs, which is something that does happen, uh, all you will lose is maximum that day's work that you didn't back it up. Because once you have it, when you go to the, now you can repeat the same process that I've shown, you can go to a uh, remarkable desktop app and your PDF will be there. If you want to be extra certain that everything is uh, basically backed up properly, I am not 100% comfortable with cloud services. First of all, 
I don't know if my internet is going to be up or not. Maybe there's going to be some work or not, and maybe I need that data. Maybe their service is going to be down or something like that. So what I do personally is at the end of every day, I first swipe down, let it synchronize. Once it's synchronized, then I go to the desktop app and I repeat the process I already shown, which is right click on a document, download it as a PDF and store it in a folder where it's just my daily archive. And I do that at the end of every single day. That way I have redundancy, I have backups and I have everything that I can possibly need. So even in the worst case scenario of something happening, I'm not losing or the data that I'm going to lose is minimal. So that's the practice how to do this on the Remarkable. Now let's move on to the books platform. On the books platform, it's very simple. You go tap in the middle to expose the option. You go to the bizarrely the scribble toolbar and then above the export. First, I'm going to hit save. And this is not going to give you an indication or anything. That's one of the things it just doesn't tell you that it saved it. So first I'm going to hit save. And then I'm going to hit export exactly the same like before. And finally, once I'm done with those, I'm going to close the document once more, right? So all of those things, it's save, export and close the document. That way I ensure that everything has been done properly. And then I can synchronize with the auto sync service if I want to, or you can use one of those other options that I've shown using the books drop if you so choose. For me personally, this is the best option because I just do this. And I also have my Google Drive set up so that uh, I have a local copy on a computer automatically as well. So then this happens completely automatically. If you don't have it, then you would need to download that version from your Google Drive or from uh, uh, Pushbooks or Bookstrop, it's called, um, to download it, the file physically onto a different location. So same type of mindset, just a little bit of a different process. And on the super note, it's again, pretty much the same stuff. You go to export, so more, more options and you go to export. Uh, the changes are automatically saved once you exit from the document. So I would first export, then I would exit from the document. And the third thing is swipe down and tap on the synchronization cloud so that you synchronize with your cloud account. Once it's synchronized, you get that file off the cloud onto your local storage. And this is my end of the day routine. If you don't use it daily, on any of the platforms, it doesn't matter. If you just, you know, don't feel comfortable to do this at the end of every day, even though it's literally like maybe two, three minutes added at the end of the day to ensure peace of mind, like well worth it. But in a case it's not worth it for you, you can do it once a week, or maybe if you feel very lucky once a month. Um, not doing it at all is a really bad idea because you are tempting the faith of the digital storage gods, which uh, don't like that. And sooner rather than later, you will experience a data failure on any of the devices. All of them are equally prone to this because they use flash storage. So that's that's the technology that that's the that's what happens with that technology. Um, so it's a good idea just to kind of keep in mind this kind of uh, weekly, monthly, daily backup and archival practices just to ensure a simple peace of mind. All right. And finally, I just wanted to show just uh, two kind of additional tips or tricks um, of slightly different usage of MDO or what you can do with the data and uh, yeah, how you can actually input things depending on the platforms that you use. So the first thing that I want to show is how you can actually convert uh, written, handwritten uh, content in your MDO outside of the device, what is the uh, best way to do that? So um, I'm going to use uh, uh, Remarkable and Supernote, but the similar thing can be done also on books. So the key point here is that you need to export a page or series of pages as PNG files, as image files, right? So on the Remarkable, that's easily done because you can simply send by email now, here's the caveat if you have the Connect subscription. If you don't have Connect subscription, you can't export as a PNG from the device. You have to go into the Remarkable app, right click and then export as a PNG. 
but I don't know if you can export a single page. And I know that you can export the whole document, which is like massive, uh, but maybe you can export a single page, not sure. But yeah, you can definitely go, uh, if you have the Connect subscription, send by email, and then you can export as a PNG file. Uh, similarly, on a super note, it's a little bit easier because all you need to do is swipe down. You, you should be like in a page where you wanna be. So for example, this one, you swipe down and you tap down this icon, which is a screenshot. And that automatically takes a screenshot and places it into the screenshots folder. Now, once it's there, you can synchronize as before and then you can go to the cloud supernote or use the supernote partner app and grab that screenshot from there or you can always use the usb-c connection as well on the books uh, platform you also have the ability to take a screenshot on a system wide level and that's basically it basically it's the same as on the uh, uh, supernote once you have your image so for example this is a screenshot from the supernote that's how that looks like or I can take one from the Remarkable, and this is a screenshot from the Remarkable. Um, there are many different apps and ways that actually allow you to do this kind of a um, thing, uh, but for me, one of the easiest ones is because I'm a Google Drive user, and basically that's where I reside. So for me, the easiest one is to actually just drag and drop this into Google, Google Drive, and then open up the PNG file with a uh, Google Docs. What that does is that Google Docs automatically does OCR recognition and then you can edit it and continue on working. So let's say that I have a file for folder here and let's open up the one from the super note. Yep, there we go. It has these kinds of things in here because you can see they were normally written, nothing you know special about it. So I'm just going to drag and drop that PNG here to upload it. Once it's uploaded, then I select it, right click, and then open with Google Docs, right? So now when I open up Google Docs, it's automatically gonna create a new Google Docs uh, document. And the first page is going to be your image. And first it's gonna be like, well, that didn't do anything. Well, just scroll a little bit down and ta-da it is doing the OCR recognition. Now, depending on what the content of the page is, of course, it's going to be quite different, but let's see, plan the video in Google Keep. Plan the video in Google Keep, pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply start organizing this like that so that I can just press enter and then I have a second one, right? So the second one is prepare all of the data for the video. Let's see, prepare all of the data for the Okay, he just has one thing, video. Pretty good so far. All right, let's uh, get this one here as well. So the second one is export PDF procedure for all three platforms. Export PDF pr procedure for all three platforms. Pretty good. Uh, let's see the next one. Screen capture the exported results with... Uh, audio commentary <laughs> well even if, even i couldn't read that so let's see oh that one actually screen captured the exported results with audio commentary so it managed to recognize that easier than i did my own handwriting so that's uh that's actually the first so uh and of course yes uh, then we have the re record video material and export PNG page from the Remarkable. So let's see, record video material, doing it right now. Um, export PNG page from the Remarkable. So far, it's just adding those little O's as points, but everything is really, really good. And the final one, screen capture the OCR process in Google Docs with commentary. Again, doing it right now. Screen capture the OCR process. I post fate viscos Okay, <laughs> so here in the end, we went a little bit kind of funky. So in Google Docs, all right. That's kind of weird that the only thing that the Google Docs couldn't recognize was the Google Docs. Okay, now that's kind of weird. In Google Docs with commentary. So that's that. And then I can say like, okay, I don't need these guys. Or maybe if you wanted them, you can, you, you could add them in different way. And then I can just clear it up. 
and say, all right, that's January 2nd. on a Sunday and you can organize this probably any way you want. And uh, yeah, I don't need my neat notes and weeks, something like this. And now I can just apply normal text to it and then decide how, however I want to kind of maybe this is going to be heading number two and then it's January 2nd. 2022 Sunday, for example, and these are the ones that I had. So that is a workflow that actually is quite usable and easy. And this is just one of the examples, like there's a whole multitude of apps out there that do the same thing based on an image file, right? So you can use OneNote, there's uh, uh, PDF elements, there's lots and lots of different apps out there, but this one's free, this one's always you know, at the tip of my hands. So that's why I prefer to use this one. And if you actually incorporate this to be a part of your, let's say daily routine, um, to some, it may seem like, oh, that's a lot of work. Well, if you're going to do it at the end of the year, yeah, it, it is a heck of a lot of work. But if you incorporate this to be part of your end of day routine, so at the end of the day, you do all the stuff that I already showed to make sure that your document is saved and backed up. And then you add into this uh, 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 whole thing, just grabbing a screenshot or exporting a page with a PNG. And then you go here, maybe added 15 minutes together depending on how much you write, but it's very, very difficult, even if it's like 20 minutes together to add at the end of the day. And then at the end of each day, you have all of your notes backed up, redundancy backups as well, and you convert what you have inputted into a typed form and you have it another form of backup as well, but you're also kind of keeping a, a journal in that way, if that's something that you're looking for, right? So that's something that you can apply on all three platforms. But the books platform has something really, really cool that can be used and something that's quite fun. So let's check that out. On the books platform, you can, uh, yeah, definitely do some cool things. First, I want to address something that pisses me off on the books platform. And that is the palm rejection since update 3.2 has been updated into a way that uh, forces me to basically um, turn off the, the, the palm rejection and then turn it on once I write. Obviously now for the camera, it's going to pretend that it's all fine. But what I usually do, if if I find that it's actually a problematic, then I simply swipe out, disable this one, and I start writing without worry. Once I'm done, I just enable it back and go there, right? So that's a quick little tip on how to avoid the the since update 3.2 the the palm rejection that's just uh, not better and i don't like things where updates not only take away functionality but actually make it less good or worse if i continue writing i might want to convert this to typed text. And I was correct. It is pretending that it's all good for the camera. But last night when I was actually writing, like as soon as I would put the uh, palm on, it would just flip around. So if you start experiencing that in some circumstances, this is basically what I do. I just kind of turn it off right and when i'm done i'm just turning it on and that's that what are the two things that i want to show here first one is you have to enable this for uh, for it to work by default it's disabled so if you go into the uh tap in the middle to expose the options and you go to more options and you go to settings we have the handwriting recognition settings this is in a mdo in the document right so once you go here by default this will be turned off which is enable auto recognition by double tapping onto handwritten notes so you can turn it on now i can go back 
And what this allows me to do is double tap and it is going to recognize the handwriting, convert it to a text box and fill it in with my default or last settings that I had. So if the last settings that you had were, for example, uh, I'll explain this a little bit later, just, just bear with me for now. Uh, so if your last settings were, for example, some ginormous font and using this type of font, this is not the result that you are happy with at all, right? And the majority of people will react, like, well, that's useless. Well, no, it's not useless. You just need to configure it once for a specific document, in this case, for example, MDO. And once you do, you actually have a very powerful tool at your hand or fingertips. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my own uh, 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 handwritten font that I made. There's a video if you're interested in how to do that, just check that out, you'll find it. Then I'm going to switch to a size that makes most sense. So let's try maybe 14. And there we go. 14 is rather good. And um, let's try the spacing to add a little bit. Maybe I want it to be a bit bigger. 18. Nah, I think 14 is fine. And then, or maybe, yeah, maybe you want it larger. So let's try 18, spacing one. Ah, it's just a little bit too big. So let's try 14 and spacing 1.4. And what I'm looking for here is that if I have a multiple lines of text in my text box, I want them to align with the lines that are here on the page. Right. So that's what I'm looking for. Font size and the spacing between the lines. And this one seems to be fitting for this particular font quite well. Once this is converted uh, at by default, you won't be able to touch and have anything happen to it. Right. For that, you have to do a couple of things. First of all, you need to be in the text box option to be able to edit this. How do you get to the text box option? You get to it by enabling the scribble toolbar. In the scribble toolbar, you have the T marqueed around. That's a text box. So once I'm in text box options, now I can select or create a new text box. So if I tap and select a new text box, let's just move this a little bit lower so that you can, or no, a bit higher. And now you expose, now I'm trying to expose a problem, which is this toolbar, right? So I can make it bigger, smaller, and that's what I want to do. But uh, before I do that, I just want to show it in the camera so that you can see clearly. How do I get to more options in this text box? Well, you tap on it once again. So if you notice, first time I tap on it, I select it. And now I'm in text box mode and I can select my text boxes and I have a little arrow next to it. And that indication is I'm in text box mode and now I can tap again and I have more options. Every time you see that arrow, that means that you can tap on it again and it explode or uh, exposes more options. And that's where you have copy paste, landscape orientation, portrait orientation, bold color, uh, font, font size, spacing, and all of that goodness. So once I have that, now I should be able to kind of edit this. And what can I do with my text box? Well, with the text box, I can um, adjust its size so that it fits the width of the page. But now I'm encountering a problem. This toolbar is crossing over. So what I usually do is I actually go to toolbar settings and I lower the size of the toolbar to something rather small. Now, if you have problems with smaller icons, this is not going to work for you. But for me, this works. Why do I like to do it this way? Because for many reasons, uh, first of all, now it's out of the way, right? So now I can be in my text box and I can see the entire text box and I can manipulate it normally. And second of all, it's out of the way. And uh, third of all, why not use horizontal mode? Well, because it will interfere with the navigation of the uh, document. So those are the reasons why. So what can I actually do with this? Well, uh, you can do quite a bit because now I can simply go here, tap on the letter. Now this is going to be tricky. 
And this is one of the things that I don't like about the text box. And that's the, uh, it's very fiddly to uh, select the first font so that I can just move it. And on a default keyboard, you don't have arrows to just move your cursor. So the best thing is either use a physical keyboard or use Gboard, which will allow you to kind of move things around a little bit easier. But even if you don't have that, you can just simply go backspace, backspace, space, and then add the letter that I just uh, just uh, deleted. So the same thing here, I can just tap there and then backspace, backspace, space, add C and there we go. So let's see how was the recognition. And I start writing without worry. Okay, so if I continue writing, I might want to concert this to type text. So I don't want to concert it, I want to convert it, right? So convert it to type text. All right, so that's kind of good. But the really cool thing is that now that I have this kind of a setup, so let's type. Now that I have this kind of a setup, you can see that the text box automatic curly expands and because I set up the font size and align spacing every new line corresponds Bones with the page line, right? And okay, so I need to add a space here. And obviously, so now I can press enter, enter, and then you can have a new row if you wanted and continue typing. So this is a very uh, unusual, but an alternative way that you can use and type in your information in the MDO should you choose to do that. And also, if you've written things, then you can just double tap and convert them. One very important note is that these conversions as soon as you leave the page, they are burned in and that's about it. You can't go back to your handwriting. You can go back to handwriting if you uh, stay on the same page and then in the uh, scribble tools, uh, scribble toolbar, you have undo and redo. And if you do that, then, then, it, then you can uh, go back to your handwritten notes. But as soon as you leave the page, that conversion is permanent. So just keep that in mind. That's a very, very uh, uh, different type of a use case scenario. And especially it's really interesting because you can use your Bluetooth keyboard and just type away with your keyboard. And once such a document is exported, it looks like this. So it is an object and uh, it really depends if you, if I start moving this, it's going to turn black, mainly because I don't have this font installed right on the computer. So I'm not going to move it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to simply zoom in so that you guys can see how does this look like. So this is my handwritten font and this is how, yeah, the handwritten uh, 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 or handwritten font inputted text that I just showed using text boxes looks like when it's exported from the books platform. So that's an alternative way of using it as well. So you can also kind of type it in like this, then you double tap, convert to text, tidy it up, and that's about it. Yes, you do need to set up the text box to kind of work and to fit the lines. But once you do, then it just works. So that's a very cool thing to uh, kind of keep in mind. And so far, no, Remarkable can't do that. And Supernote can't do that simply because none of them have text boxes as uh, tools that you can use in a document. So, so far, only Books is able to uh, do this and only on Books you will be able to use a MDO in this way. All right, I hope that you found this video in, uh, interesting and most importantly, useful. I can't stress enough how important it is to have a good, usable daily 
archiving, versioning, and backup workflow in place. When you're dealing with digital devices, loss of data is an inevitability. It doesn't matter what kind of device it is or something, not, none of that matters. It is something that will at some point happen. Now, it might not happen in five or seven years or anything like that, but it is absolutely inevitable that eventually it will happen. As I said, if you haven't experienced data loss, then you genuinely don't have an idea or understanding, a real understanding of just how important the backup um, process is. I hope that you never have to find out and that's the purpose of this video and the tips in the second portion of the video, which is that you never ensure the level of stress and despair that is associated with an important bit of data simply vanishing and being lost forever. So that's something that I don't want you to experience with the My Daily Organizer and that's why I highly, highly recommend and encourage you to do these things on a daily basis simply to have a peace of mind and yeah, not think about it. Even if the worst thing happens, so what? the loss would be absolutely minimal. And I think that it's worth the absolute minimal extra effort needed to actually just at the end of the day, export, save, download, done. So that's kind of uh, a very, very simple thing to do and then just move on and never have a problem with this kind of thing. So yeah, that's it for me. If you don't know what my daily organizer is, please check out the link down below in the description where there's a playlist, my daily organizer playlist. There's lots of videos there um, that are basically describing the uh, what the product is, some tips and tricks, commonly asked questions, installation instructions, all of the stuff to actually get you started and to understand what my daily organizer is. And if that's the type of a product that you might be interested in or not. To all of the existing customers and the users, thank you so much. You help me make this product even better with your feedback and your kindness is infinitely appreciated. It's a really, really wonderful thing to kind of receive so much nice stories about the usage and everything from you guys. So thank you. That's it for me. Stay safe, stay healthy and see you in the next video. Bye.